chances are if you do a lot of baking, you're going to come across a recipe sooner or later that's going to ask for almond paste, otherwise known as marzipan. Now I went to the supermarket the other day and I looked at the prices of ready-made almond paste and there were two different brands. One was $6.98, the other was $7.93, something like that, for seven ounces. I thought that was pretty expensive. So I did some research and um, I haven't done this before until recently, uh, making my own. So I went to another store and I bought almond flour, which was $8 for a, a bag of almond flour. And I, I could make four recipes out of there of 14 ounces. So what I would pay in the supermarket just for the convenience, $7 or $8 for seven ounces, I got four times that for half that price. So anyway, I'm going to start with almond flour. And almond flour is different from almond meal. Almond flour is made from grinding blanched almonds in a food processor or some other type of machine. That's almond flour. Almond meal is doing the exact same thing but with the, with the skin on the almonds. So I'm going to take one and one half cups of almond flour and it looks like I'm going to have to buy some more soon. There's one and one half cups. Then I'm going to take an equal amount, one and a half cups of confectioner's sugar. There's one and a half confectioner's sugar. Now I'm going to just give it a little bit of a mix. I can see that there's a little bit of white, so I want to get it really mixed up. And then I'm going to add one egg, yolk, uh, egg white and one teaspoon of almond extract. So there goes the egg white. And there goes the almond extract. And now we're going to mix it until it all comes together. There. It's not all together yet, but it will be. Now, when I finish with this, this will weigh approximately 14 ounces. So you've gotten two of those packages for half the price. And now for storage, you can put this in the refrigerator up to one week, tightly wrapped, or you can put it in the freezer, tightly wrapped for oh, three months, maybe. Now, other things to do with marzipan. Um, you've ever seen those little, they look like little fruit, they candied fruits, that's what these are. You can take this and you can mold it into all kinds of things and then paint it and make a cherry out of it or an apple or whatever you want to. You can also take little pieces of this and uh, make a round again and then you can put a stem on them and dip them in chocolate and then you have candy because that's basically what marzipan is. It is a candy. So you can sculpt it if you're into that sort of thing. So I'm going to need a half a cup of this for the recipe that I'm making for this almond coffee cake. So I'm going to just wrap this up for a little bit while I work on the dough for the coffee cake because this is going to go into the filling of the coffee cake. So wrap it up, refrigerate it, and I'll start the coffee cake. Now we'll start the dough for our buttery almond coffee cake. I have three cups of all-purpose flour and two and a half sticks of butter, very cold, cut into small cubes. So I'm going to put the flour in my food processor. My wonderful food processor that is well over 25 years old and still runs well, love it. Add the butter. Okay, 
Now cover it and I'm gonna pulse it about five, six, seven times. All right, I gave it a few more. Okay, that's it. We're gonna get a bowl. Put this in the bowl. Cover this up, and before we go any further, this needs to go into the refrigerator for a little while. Our butter and flour mixture is in the refrigerator. Now we need to proof our yeast, because this is a yeast coffee cake. So I'm going to start with the yeast, and this is, um, I buy it in bulk, and then I put it into jars, and I keep it in my refrigerator. I'm going to use four and a half teaspoons, but I also have a pinch of salt on my teaspoon measure, so I'm going to dump that in, because that's the food for the yeast to feed on. So four and a half, two, three, four, and a half, and a quarter of a cup of warm water. Don't make it too hot. And then we're going to just mix this up. And, you know, give it a good mix. Just to make sure all the yeast is moistened. And now, we're going to let this sit here for five minutes to proof and get frothy. It's been a little over five minutes and it's frothy, so I know it's alive. So to it, I'm going to add two eggs quarter of a cup of sugar and a half a cup of evaporated milk, not sweet and condensed, just evaporated. So we'll start with those, the eggs, the sugar, and the evaporated milk. And I'm going to give those a little bit of a whisk. Even though I could do this on the mixer, I'm just starting it here. Now I'm going to add the flour and butter mixture to this. And now I'm going to put this on our mixer. And I just want to get it all blended up. pretty well blended. And I'm going to scrape it down. And by the way, when I was proofing my yeast, I think I said a pinch of salt. I meant to say a pinch of sugar because the sugar is what feeds the yeast. So it's a pinch of sugar that goes in there. I'll make it correct on the uh, recipe of the website. Now what I'm going to do is just scrape this down. And now I'm going to cover this as soon as I'm done. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap. And this is going to go into my refrigerator for about overnight. No abouts about it. It's going to go in the refrigerator overnight on a cold rise which sometimes I think works out better than a room temperature rise, but I guess it really depends upon the recipe. So here I go. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and in the refrigerator, and I will see you tomorrow to finish this. It's the next day. And our coffee cake uh, batter has been in the refrigerator overnight. You don't have to leave it overnight, but it, you really need it in there for a good three, four, five hours. So if you start early enough in the day, you can finish it, but so much easier to just make the batter the day before and finish it off this day. So we're going to proceed. I have a 10 inch bunt pan, which I have generously buttered and floured. And then I have a half a cup 
of slivered blanched almonds, which I coarsely chopped. And I'm just going to put those all over the bottom. That you don't have to worry that they're not sticking because the dough is going to go on top of them. It'll hold it in place. Just Okay, lost one there. I'm going to put this aside. And now we're going to get going with our dough. I'm going to flour up my board because this is a rather sticky dough. Get it out. It didn't rise a lot, but cold rise dough doesn't rise a lot. Once it hits the heat, that's when it starts rising. The slow rise just makes a more tender batter, I think. Now just do that. Now I want to roll it up fairly large, like 20 by 20. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, there are pockets of butter in the dough. That's perfect. This is almost like a, a faux puff pastry. Very soft, very sticky. My handy ruler here, that's about 18. Okay, that's closer to 20. Now I want to get it out this way. close. Bring it out just a little bit more. I'm trying to square it off because I want to now fold it. I'm going to have one messy floor. Take my bench scraper. Again, a very handy tool when you're doing this kind of pastry work. And I want to just bring that out. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Now I want to get this to about six and a half by 30. So again, a lot of rolling involved here. Oh wait, hold on. All right, I've got more than six and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to more closer to seven, but we don't have to be too exact. Now we want to get the length. So I want it to be more like that. Oops. Close. 
again, fold again. Wrong tool. That's about right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in plastic wrap. And I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator while I make the filling. I'll get another piece of wrapping, plastic wrap and wrap that better. So now this is going to go in the refrigerator, probably be in there for about 10, 15 minutes while I do the filling. So give me a minute. I'm now ready to make the filling. You can see I haven't cleaned up the counter because I'm going to be rolling the dough again in a minute. So why clean it up in between time? So anyways, we're going to start with butter, sugar, almond paste, and uh, almond extract. Easy recipe, half a cup of butter, half a cup of sugar, half a cup of almond paste, half a teaspoon of almond uh, extract. I'm going to put that butter in and the sugar and the almond paste and the almond extract. And now we're just going to blend it up until it's smooth. Give that a check. Now I can see some of the butter didn't get blended because it stayed on the paddle. So I'm going to give it another moment or so. So there's our filling, and now I'll put the filling aside, I'll get the dough back out of the refrigerator, I'll roll it up, we'll fill it, and then we'll shape it. So here's our dough out of the refrigerator, and I'm just going to reflower my surface here, get it out of the plastic wrap. It's so soft, it's just falling apart. Now, I want to get this to a approximately 9 by 24. So let's see where this is. This is at 7. That is your 9. sticks, throw a little bit more flour underneath it, because otherwise it won't glide out. It'll just keep snapping back. Just a touch more. I'm going to even this off just a little. That's close enough. Now our filling. The 
smell of almond is unbelievably strong. There we go. Get our little offset spatula. And now we'll just spread. There's still little chunks of marzipan in there, but that's, don't worry about that. Not a problem. Okay, get this out of here and get our pan. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it like a jelly roll from the long side. Trim these edges. All right, now I want eight pieces. So I'll cut it in half. In half. And each one in half. Get our pan. And now I'm going to put them cut side up in the pan. And just fit them in there. There you go. Eight eight pieces in the pan. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let it sit at room temperature for about an hour to an hour and a half until it gets puffier. Then we'll bake it. My coffee cake has been sitting at room temperature for about an hour and it's gotten puffy as you can see. Um, my oven is on at 375 degrees and I'm going to put this in there for 45 minutes. Now I know some of you, when you bake cakes and stuff, you bake them like on a sheet pan, but when you're baking in a bundt pan, you shouldn't do that simply because you've got this hole in the middle and you want the air circulating all around so that the, the um, cake bakes evenly. If you have the hole covered, then it's just circulating around the outside. So we're gonna put this in 45 minutes, 375. Here is our butter almond coffee cake out of the oven. Smells wonderful. I'm actually going to remove it right away. Here we go. Just a couple of minor dings, but there it is, and it's got to really cool down right now. And if you want, you can add a, you know, powdered sugar, or you can add a powdered sugar icing, whatever you want to the top of it, up to you.